Any expectations in terms of what Powell may talk about today that perhaps would be somewhat different than what we've heard from him lately or more of the same? I think the verbiage in the statement has to change in view of their announcement of the change in their basic strategic framework. These, these changes shouldn't induce any uh, market reaction. The market's already expecting interest rates are on the floor for years, and that's basically what the Fed's going to say, but in a different way. Uh, I think they probably spent a lot of time wordsmithing this uh, statement, uh, and they won't be unhappy if the market gives no reaction. Alan, you know, we, we talk a lot on the network of late for obvious reasons about the sense that there's almost two economies. You know, there's the, let's call it the Amazon-led economy or the digital-led economy that seems to be very strong or is very strong. And then there's the your local restaurant on the corner economy that is not strong at all. What can uh, Powell talk about and or what can the Fed do to sort of try to continue to focus on that, the, uh, the restaurant-led economy, so to speak? Sadly, not a lot other than the obvious, which is to try to keep the give the economy a boost when it's needed. Unfortunately, on that score, it's given almost almost as much boost as it can. Maybe there's a little bit more than it can do, but not less. And that's, of course, why, you know, you're hearing from Chairman Powell lately what we used to hear years ago from Chairman Bernanke. Please, fiscal policy, won't you help us? Right. And uh, he'll probably repeat that. And it won't be in the statement, but it'll be in the Q&A. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty, uh, pretty sure. The only other thing you think of is there is this Main Street lending facility, which has barely gotten off the ground. But even that's not aimed at your local corner restaurant. You know, they call it for small businesses, but these small businesses may have hundreds or thousands of employees. It's not your local restaurant or uh, Bodega. Yeah. Uh, well, all right. Which gets us to fiscal policy. You know, Mark Meadows, the chief of staff, is going to be joining us shortly. Um, what would you say to him in terms of whether we need more stimulus, more relief, uh, and whether we need it fast? Uh, I would say that it's obvious that we need more. It's mostly relief more than stimulus at this stage still. But you can call it what you will. We need more. A lot of it has now uh, has disappeared. You know, you can pat him on the back for the CARES Act, although that didn't come mostly out of the administration. That was a very good thing. Uh, most of that money is gone now. We need more. And the thing I would press him on, if I had him in front of me, as you will, is aid to state and local governments. I mean, where are the firefighters paid? Where are the school teachers paid? Where are the police uh, paid? And on and on and on. Uh, by state and local governments, not by the federal government. And they are just being crushed by greater expenses and of tremendous fall off in sales revenue. And yet the administration and the Republicans in Congress have been stubborn about not giving relief to the states. Alan, Leslie Picker here. Uh, this is the last FOMC meeting before the election, and there's been a lot of commentary, uh, especially with regard to investors and, and the markets, about the potential for some volatility surrounding, uh, you know, uncertainty with the election, delayed results, and so forth that people are starting to position for now. Uh, does the Fed have any recourse here uh, to help maybe calm some of this concern surrounding uh, electoral volatility? Well, it's a good question. I think, first of all, they have to be reactive rather than proactive. We can't have Chairman Powell go out there, he, he won't, and say, I'm really worried about instability after the election, and therefore we're doing X, Y, and Z. If, in fact, we have financial instability, frankly, I'm a lot more worried about political instability, but Fed can't do anything about that. If, in fact, we have financial instability in the post-election period, the Fed is going to step in as the firemen, as they have in the past and douse the flames as best they can, wherever they are. If they're in the stock market, the bond market, credit markets, banks, um, we may not have any of that, but they will be at the ready. They're not naive. They know that we're in for a potentially rough period after the election. And there may or may not be things that the Fed needs to do on the financial front, but that's sort of the limit of their ability. 